It's been said that you can tell a lot about a person by the inside of their home. Is the space cluttered, simplistic, modern, or maybe it's a giant jungle-like space that looks like it's been constructed for the sole purpose of partying like there's no tomorrow. When it comes to a legendary character like musician Rick James, I think you can probably guess which one of those suits him best. Most of us probably remember Rick James best not for his music, but for the infamous Chappelle show. And they had skits which story of his drug-fueled antics kept everyone enthralled. And guess what? Recently unearthed images of his home from a Better Homes and Gardens magazine shoot in the late 70s have revealed that his former home fit this personality to a T. Almost a little too perfectly if you ask me. There's no doubt about it. All these images look like they've been ripped directly out of a 1970s fever dream. Or at least the craziest trip Rick James ever took part in. For starters, every single room has at least two colors and lengths of carpet. And then there's a pool located inside what I would assume acted as the home's main living space. And if I'm not mistaken, there's carpeting on the one side of the room that's closest to the furniture. That's kind of like having carpet in your bathroom. And I can't even imagine what a pain that would have been to keep clean. Elsewhere, Rick kept one of the most psychedelic dens ever designed, draped in orange in shades of brown with mushroom-like stools, bucket seating, pictured carpets, and walls designed out of rock. There's even a fully stocked bar in here that looks like it was constructed to serve drinks, especially for the Muppets, thanks to that shag covering on the bar stools and bar top. It's also interesting to note that some of these bedrooms look like exact replicas of one another, only with different color palettes. It's almost like Rick couldn't decide between a few different decor styles and simply wanted to try them all. Last but not least, there's one bedroom in this home that could only be described as Rick's love palace. After all, you don't hang a giant heart over a pink bed and not get busy. What an insane looking place, right? But wanna hear the craziest thing of all? None of this is real, but I bet you thought it was, didn't you? These images that recently began going viral online and that some media outlets actually picked up and ran with were actually AI generated and then passed off as the real thing. Despite how convincing they look, they are 100% fake. Now I know you're probably feeling a little disappointed right now. So that's why I did a little extra digging and found out more about Rick's actual former home. Situated above Studio City, just off Laurel Canyon Boulevard, Rick James' Los Angeles mansion was a traditional style abode that was originally constructed in 1950 and served as his primary home for much of the 1980s and early 90s. This 7,555 square foot residence with six bedrooms and seven bathrooms in the Hollywood Hills also comes with a bit of a celebrity pedigree because after Rick lived here, so did actors like Amy Yazbek, star of Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and Mickey Rooney as well. The open floor plan of the home boasts a main level with multiple sitting rooms, as well as a parlor with a gorgeous fireplace and ample built-ins. Other spaces include a chef's kitchen that will make any gourmet cook feel right at home, especially when they can serve meals inside a tastefully decorated formal dining room. No shag carpeting in here this time. Elsewhere is a spacious den that can double as a home theater, while French doors lead out to a landscaped and brick paved patio fit for some serious entertaining. Upstairs you'll discover several bedrooms, but it's really the master suite that steals the show, with a fireplace, crystal chandelier, and its own full bath complete with a steam shower and hot tub. Yeah, Rick James definitely lived in this place. Heading back outdoors to the patio, you'll discover a fully equipped outdoor kitchen with a brick oven and a dining area large enough for a full table, as well as a parlor lounge and fire pit. There's also several pool features out there, including a full-size swimming pool, hot tub with a waterfall element enclosed by curtains, and a meditation pool too. Plus, if you're a gamester, you're in luck because you can challenge your friends or family members to a game of chess on the property's life-sized board. Rounding things off is a cottage-style guest house with wide views of the mountains and downtown cityscape as well. Is it any wonder that Rick called this place home during the height of his career? He did decide to eventually move off the place, selling it for a little over $1 million in 1991. Where did he head next? 
So we're about to find out. But first, a quick side trip to Buffalo. As I mentioned, many know Rick James best thanks to The Chappelle Show, where some of his legendary antics were brought to life in hilarious fashion. But recently, Eddie Murphy also revealed a surprising story from James' past that once took place inside of Rick's home in Buffalo, New York. With Buffalo being Rick's hometown, it only makes sense for him to have owned property in this city. And one visit in 1985 would end up becoming the basis for Eddie's hit song alongside side Rick, known as Party All The Time. According to Eddie, this song wouldn't exist at all if he hadn't been held up in Rick's Buffalo home during an epic snowstorm. While appearing on an episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live, Murphy revealed that he was originally only supposed to be visiting Rick for a weekend to record the song. But five feet of snowfall wound up keeping him there for two weeks. Thankfully, this wound up being one of the fondest memories of Eddie's life and one that he looks back on routinely now that Rick has left this world behind. Despite being born in Buffalo, that wouldn't be where Rick James ultimately passed on. Instead, his final days were spent in his longtime home of Los Angeles, where he was living at the Oakland at Toluca Hills apartment complex. On August 6, 2004, Rick James was found dead by his full-time caretaker at this Hollywood address. He was only 56 years old at the time. By this point, it was well documented that he had a number of vices, including hard drugs. As someone who once described himself as an icon of drug use and eroticism, it makes sense that Rick's fans assumed he must have passed on from an overdose. But the actual cause of his death was determined to be a heart attack. That being said, the toxicology report did reveal that Rick had at least nine different narcotics in his system at the time of his death, including cocaine, and meth. Rick's frequent drug use is probably why images like I showed you off the top of this story are simply taken at face value. All right, everyone, that is going to bring this latest edition of House Tour to a close. Thanks so much for joining me today. And before you head out, consider answering the following question. Who is one deceased celebrity that you'd like to see AI design a house for next? By the way, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to never miss an episode. My name's Kara, and if you want to check out another celebrity, Celebrities real estate, then stay tuned as I take you inside the homes of Ric Flair. I'll see you next time. Bye. There are few athletes or entertainers quite as synonymous with wealth as the styling, profiling, limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling and dealing son of a gun, professional wrestler known as the nature boy, Ric Flair. But as much as Ric has always loved to tell anyone who will listen that his shoes cost more than your house, when it comes to his own living arrangements, Ric has always come up short in terms of expectations versus reality. That might have something to do with the fact that after a lifetime of hard living, Rick's net worth had receded to a reported $500,000. But before we get into the reasons for that, let's take a look at Rick's longtime home in Charlotte, North Carolina, a gorgeous manor that stands over 5,000 square feet and has been assessed as being worth as much as $1 million. Boasting two stories with six rooms, four bathrooms, and an outdoor pool, Rick owned this property located just 30 minutes from Charlotte's downtown area for years. Based upon photos online, it boasted a front foyer with wooden floors and a curvy main staircase. It's also got an attic space up top that's been transformed into an activity center and games room with an arts and crafts space, built-in shelves, as well as a ping pong table. My guess, this is the one spot in the house Rick designed for his grandkids whenever they happen to drop by. Then again, if they'd rather spend time outside, they could relax around his screened-in deck or take a jump into the geometrically shaped pool. As pretty as this place is, there was that one time that Rick unfortunately brought his work home with him in the type of way that only can happen in professional wrestling. While feuding with his own son David during his days in WCW, Rick would see his home invaded by his bitter offspring and his accomplice, Vince Russo, who attempted to put a scare into Rick's daughter, Ashley. The woman would grow up to become one of the most accomplished female wrestlers of all time, Charlotte Flair. Other tidbits that this throwback clip revealed about Rick's home include a living room with a marble hearth fireplace, along with a very white family 
paint portrait. Meanwhile, upstairs in Rick's bedroom, he owned a four corner post bed. Of course, it was Rick's hardy hard ways that eventually landed him in financial hot water and would lead to him abandoning this home to find somewhere new to live. Rick Flair's issues with the IRS date back as far as the early 90s. In fact, it was due to his legal issues that he eventually had to sell his longtime Charlotte home and figure out arrangements of a different sort. That living arrangement wasn't entirely clear for a while. Then the IRS came calling in the late 2010s. In 2019, Rick was body slammed with a $280,000 tax bill just days after being released from the hospital following emergency surgery. At the time, both the IRS and the Georgia Department of Revenue had issued notices of liens on the home the nature boy was living in, but it wasn't officially his home. While spending the past few years living with his fifth wife, Wendy Barlow in Atlanta, Rick had been renting a $370,000 property, boasting five bedrooms in the middle of the city suburbs. And after getting hit with the lien, tax documents would reveal that Rick still owed the federal government nearly $240,000 on his 2016 through 2018 earnings. That means any property that was officially under his name could be seized to settle those debts. But Rick doesn't own any land or real estate right now. Complicating matters further was his health scare that resulted in what he referred to as a $1.8 million tuna. So with his expenses piling up, is it any surprise that Rick decided to step into the ring once more in 2022 for a fight that was billed as Ric Flair's last match? All he needed to do to prepare himself properly for his big moment was move homes once again. While preparing for his final bout, teaming up with his son-in-law Andrade to take on Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett, Ric Flair moved to Florida for the first time in his life to begin getting himself into fighting shape again. More specifically, he moved to Tampa. When asked to describe what his experiences in Florida had been like, Flair said, this town is just Mac Daddy. It's awesome. Since his arrival in Florida, Flair has continued to rent a home alongside his wife, Wendy. And while I can't tell you exactly where they live, I can tell you about how they spend their time in the city. For starters, Rick has become a boating fiend since moving to Florida. And if you can't find him on the open water, then odds are pretty good that he's living it up at bars like Hula Bay or the Battery. And then there's his other new job as a deputy of Hillsborough County after Sheriff Chad Cronister named him an honorary member of the staff. In the lead up to the last match, Rick also spent two hours a day at Hard Knock South, a private gym where John Cena's own personal trainer pushed Rick harder than anyone has in years. Once he finished with that experience, Rick would take his in-ring skills to Tampa Bay's Lethal Academy, a pro wrestling shop run by Rick's opponent and friend, Jay Lethal. According to Flair, he decided to embark on this final match, not because he was bored or because he needed the money, but because he simply wanted to taste the thrill of performing one last time. And now that the match is over, he won by the way, you can find Rick getting visits at his Florida home from some of his famous friends, such as country singer Darius Rucker, who showed up at Rick's place a couple of years ago to personally serenade him. Based on the double TV layout of that room, it looks like Rick is doing all right for himself once again, financially speaking that is. The exact state of his legal issues isn't entirely clear, but after making a ton of bank off his last match in summer 2022, he probably managed to clear a lot of it from his books. Here's hoping that Rick can finally get around to enjoying retirement and not have to worry about potentially going broke. That's simply no way for the legend of Ric Flair to come to an end. Until that final chapter is written once and for all, that'll bring this latest edition of House Tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching, and before you leave, consider answering the following question. How old is too old to step into a wrestling ring for the last time? Let me know if you think Rick could potentially have one more match if he really wanted in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode.